Welcome to Behind the Scenes, coming to you from the Engineers Australia Awards in Hobart, where we celebrate the best in the business. We're recording from Nipaluna, Hobart, on the traditional lands of the Muwanina people, and we acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal people and their connection to culture and country. Today we're with one of Intura's nominees, Kate Hamilton. We are here at the Engineer Australia Awards in Hobart, Tasmania, and we've got one of Intura's nominees, Kate Hamilton. Kate, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. First question I want to ask you today is who are you? Um, I'm an engineer. I work in the renewable developments team, so we look at wind and solar power. I like playing sport. I enjoy being nerdy in science things, so yeah. Fair enough. (laughs) The reason we're here today is because you've been nominated as the Emerging Engineer of the Year in Tasmania. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's pretty exciting to be recognised by the business as someone that they think is worthy of putting forward for a nomination like that's pretty cool. I would just want to take a few steps back and talk about you coming up and coming to engineering. How were you through school? I was very studious. I loved maths and I was, yeah, teacher's pet kind of all the way through school. Really enjoyed school. So maths was something you were kind of naturally drawn to? Yeah, I was always finishing all the maths work as soon as it was put up on the whiteboard or yeah I really enjoyed maths while through school. And is that something that was in the family or are you a, uh, a black sheep as it were? Oh uh, my brother was my brother was similar both my parents are they were never super academic didn't go to uni or anything but yeah we were sort of a, a slightly nerdy family but yeah. And you mentioned about uh, being into science as well as being into maths. Was there a, a direct pathway to engineering? Was there a kind of a decision point when you decided to go down the engineering path rather than down the science path? Was that an option? Yeah, I spent most of high school having no idea where I wanted to go after school because I had sort of a lot of different interests. And in, like I knew I liked maths and science and sort of wanted to do something with that, but I didn't really know what. Um, In primary school, I had a science teacher who was really into environmental science. So we did a lot of water monitoring, uh, biodiversity studies and all things like that. And that got me quite interested in sustainability, particularly. Um, And then throughout the later part of high school, I sort of was trying to work out where I wanted to go with that aspect of things, whether it was something like low energy building design, I was quite interested in that, or whether it was some sort of environmental science, engineering and looking at energy or technologies that went along with something like that. And so that was sort of the, the driver of, was my interest in sustainability and sort of how I could get to that aspect of things. Okay, so what was the, the final decision, I guess, then to go down the past path that you went down? Um, I did work experience when I was in year 12. I spent one day with an architect Mm -hmm. and worked out they liked colouring in things. And, uh, well, they liked drawing things. And I was like, I like architect, like I like, um, no, what's the word? Technical drawing. I like technical drawing. But the sort of freestyle arty aspect of architecture was not something that I was into. So I decided to go down the more sciencey route and whether that led to building design and that sort of thing or whether it led somewhere else, that sort of was the point that I decided there was engineering over other things. Yep. And did you pick electrical engineering from the outset? I got a scholarship at uni to do, and it meant that I had to do a, what they called flexible first year. So I had to not choose in my first year with uni what I was actually studying. Um, I studied, ended up choosing a degree called Renewable Energy Engineering at UNSW and that involved a few different areas of sort of a broad area of engineering, a bit of electrical, a bit of mechanical, a bit of other things like low energy building design and wind energy, bioenergy, policy, all sorts of things that were a bit broader and that appealed to me a bit more than the 
direct electrical engineering pathway. So that would have been a relatively new course, I would think. Sort of. The um, UNSW's had a solar engineering degree since about 1995. Mm -hmm. They've got a really strong solar researching um, division at their university and it sort of was bred out of that and just a being a bit broader but also in that sort of energy research space. So as you were going through uni, were there any particular fields or areas of interest obviously in that renewable space, but were there any particular fields that you were really got the hooks in? I did really enjoy the courses on low energy building design and did think about going into sort of that um, more mechanical engineering aspects of thermodynamics and heat flows within buildings that was quite interesting Um, and then I did courses on how the grid worked how the grid stayed stable how the national energy market functioned and that was very fascinating Um, also did a course on sustainable development and we worked with an NGO in Cambodia and did some design work for them and then went over and saw what they were doing working with the local community and sort of upskilling the local community and that was really fascinating so sort of through a combination of those things that sort of has really led to the work that I currently do um, on microgrids and working with communities on energy projects. Yeah let's jump forward to there so how long have you been at Intura now? A bit over six years. Yeah and how did you come to be at Intura? I did the internship, the summer vacation program at Hydro Tasmania over one summer. So we moved down to Tassie for three months and worked there and that was really cool. I'd never spent much time in Tassie. I grew up in Victoria and studied in Sydney and yeah, so that was really cool. I really liked Hobart um, and before I left that, I still had six months of uni to go, but I saw a job being advertised for this renewable energy team at Ventura, so I thought I'd apply for it anyway, even though it was a little way off, and yeah, ended up ended up here six months later. Yeah, so talk me through the renewable energy team and what they do. Yeah, so we look at variable renewable energy, so wind and solar power, batteries that support that, um, microgrids, so the combination of the wind, solar and batteries that work together with diesel or gas generation to make a small island and grid work. So whether that's a physical island like King or Flinders Island in the Bass Strait for those in Tassie or a mining site that's out in the middle of nowhere or small islands out in the Pacific. Um, Yeah, so we look at the feasibility of those grids and how they might work, the control systems that make them work, all sorts of things like that. So there's some pretty exciting pieces of work that go, that you've just mentioned in that group of things. And a couple of them are the island work that I, that you guys do, and then also the, um, the remote mining sites. So talk me through a couple of those projects. Yeah, so the whole time that I've been at Ensura, I've been working with the utility over in Tonga and the government over there. Um, them to try and progress their renewable energy targets to currently most of their generation is from diesel power so that means shipping diesel out into the middle of the pacific which is rather expensive Um, and they're trying to move away from having to rely on that diesel and they've got plenty of solar resource there so yeah we've been working with them on some battery projects to be able to support solar power that's already in their grid as well as additions of solar and batteries on some of their outer islands and some new electrification projects at them as well. Fantastic and some of the mine sites? Yeah so we work with a number of mining companies and we have a control system that we design and that control system is the thing that sort of orchestrates how the variable renewable energy works in with the traditional generation whether that's gas or diesel and supported by things like dynamic resistors or batteries to be able to provide a really high level of reliability which a lot of mining sites require while still being able to maximize that amount of renewable energy that they can use in the grid at any time. And the whole idea is to reduce reliance on diesel and reduce CO2 yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah, max. They're like often it's cheaper and better for the environment, and yeah, just also some of these companies are just sort of looking to push the boundaries a bit and see see what's possible. Yeah, fantastic. So from those early days where you've had an interest in these renewable energy to then being able to take that all the way through and and I guess reduce diesel consumption but also help my tides, help remote islands um, actually be t- to a degree self-sustaining as far as energy goes how satisfying is that from a career point of view? Yeah it is really cool to know that I guess 16 year old me would look at me now and go like yeah you did you did get somewhere cool you did get somewhere that's satisfying and you're doing like interesting work that's good for the environment and good for the world. So thinking forward 10 years, where would, uh, where would Kate be? What would Kate be doing? It's a good question. I really quite enjoy the technical work that I've been doing on the control systems and coding the control system. I, I find that process really interesting and really rewarding. Um, so I'd definitely like to keep doing that for a while, but I don't really know. I just sort of see where the path leads me and take the opportunities that come along and it usually usually you find that the opportunities are pretty rewarding and lead you in the right direction. I'd imagine over this time that you've seen some pretty big changes in technology um, that the hardware the software the way it's um, the way it's used what's what's a couple of the biggest changes that you've seen in your time? Well that's an interesting one. I don't know. I, I, I guess I went into uni and when Tony Abbott was in government and renewable energy wasn't looking a very strong area of the market. There was a few policy changes that weren't very favourable to that industry, but it's been really cool to see the, like there's been lots of advancements in solar power, whether that's the traditional solar panels that we have or the, the, the wacky end of things that go on satellites with you know, prisms to split up light and send it to three different solar collectors to make it more efficient. Um, Batteries is probably the really big one that's changed um, for our industry in terms of their ability to support the grid, to respond super quickly to changes in solar resource. When a cloud comes over, they can happen pretty quickly and you need something that replaces that power that the solar would have been providing. So that's been a real game changer. Lithium ion batteries have just become so fast and so reliable in that way. So that's probably been one of the biggest changes. And in this work, doing wonderful work, wonderful projects in beautiful locations, I hope that you've had the opportunity to go and visit a few of these beautiful places. Yeah, so I've had pretty good um, opportunity to go out to some of these places in the Pacific. I've been out into the Federated States of Micronesia, um, to an island that took three days to get to. Um, that was a pretty awesome experience and been to the Cook Islands and been out to Tonga a number of times and be out there again in two weeks for seeing some of these electrification projects that are undergoing commissioning and um, being switched on for the first time. What advice would you give to somebody who was looking to have a career in renewables and was thinking about coming and working at Ventura? I think Ventura is a great place to work and there's an awesome team of people um, that can support you and just keep asking, keep trying to find an avenue in and keep following opportunities that might lead you there. Yep. So Kate, the trip to the Federated States of Micronesia, that sounds like it would have been a bit of an adventure. Yeah, so we went to an island called Satuan um, in the state of Chuk and that island took about three days to get to. We had to fly to Japan, then Guam, then an island hopper into Micronesia, charter a plane and then a boat ride to finally get to this little island as part of an atoll. Mm. Um, We were there for about three days. We were staying with the community in their homes. We went around and talked to every family on the island about what sort of appliances they might want if they got an electricity grid on their island, um, how they might use it, how and sort of you got a sort of 
understanding of how that might change the trajectory of their life a bit, um, whether it's that just charging a phone to be able to talk to their kids that had moved away or whether that was a washing machine or a rice cooker or you know, things that would just make life easier as well as lights and things for um, so that was really cool the community fed us and ate with us every night and um, they sung to us it was like well oh, this really fancy delegation it was pretty special to be able to see that and yeah it's definitely not not a place that I thought I'd ever end up and I don't think you'd ever end up back there but it was a really cool experience to be able to yeah get to know the community a bit that we're working with yeah, and I'd imagine that would have had a fairly significant impact on the community. You know, it's the first time that these families have had access to electricity or reliable access to electricity. Some of them will have a small solar panel on their roof that runs a couple of light bulbs, or um, others might have their own diesel generator if they've got income coming from somewhere else and can bring in the diesel. But, yeah, being able to have access to electricity definitely opens up a lot of avenues for some of these people, whether that's to be able to make a bit of money through some sort of craft or whether it's just making life a bit easier for themselves. It's, yeah, can have a really big impact. Fantastic. Well, look, Kat, thank you so much for joining us tonight and taking the time out of your, um, your awards night to, uh, to sit down and have a chat with us. Um, all the very best uh, for your emerging engineer of the year for Tasmania um, fingers crossed toes crossed and uh, good luck for the future thank you Mark. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey behind the scenes at Ventura. We hope you've gained valuable insights into the incredible individuals driving a sustainable innovation. If you've enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations as we continue to explore the people and stories shaping our sustainable future. Connect with us on LinkedIn and Facebook and find out more about the work we do at Ventura.com you. Until next time, this is Mark signing off from Insurers Behind the Scenes, where sustainability meets inspiration.